Hello, everyone. My name is Bradley. I have a Brad taste in music. Look, let's skip the intro crap. I'm not doing the ranking this video. I'm going to be making a separate video for it, and that video is going to slap. That way you don't have to wait till the very end and then just skip the ranking because it's unimportant. It's going to be a monumental event. It's going to be worth the wait. All right, with that being said, enjoy part two. Go watch part one if you haven't. Good news. Turns out that the top 50 is about a thousand times better than the top 100 to 51. Those songs, kind of blue chunks. But the top 50, they were about as good as you remember. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone. My name is Bradley. I have a Brad taste of music. I'm sorry if my voice is a little uh, but I'm uh, recovering from a sickness. That being said, it's not going to stop me from reacting to the rest of the top. Uh, now it's the top 50 songs of 2010. Heaven can wait. We're only watching the skies. First song we have is actually not even on the playlist. Jay-Z Young Forever featuring Mr. Hudson. Yo, I love Coldplay. Young, I wanna be forever young. Do you really wanna live forever? Hey, 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 Cristal. It sounds like dog shit. I was a defender of this album because it, I, I think it has some of Jay Z's best songs of this era, where he was going a lot more pop. Um, but, uh, this is, this is not one of them. I feel like it's, uh, a little too far in that direction. It ends up sounding like the, uh, the awful collaboration he eventually ended up doing with Justin Timberlake. And I know what you're thinking. Bradley, that song's not bad. Uh, Holy Grail. It's not bad because Justin Timberlake sounds good on it, but Jay-Z doesn't work on it. He just doesn't work as a pop rapper in this instance. Let's smoke some wine. This song is boring. Definitely not the best Jay-Z song in this era, mostly because it's such a snoozer. I find the lyrics to be really... I think the chorus is really catchy. It's a nice interpretation of a song that already sounded like this, I think. I don't know. Either way, it's just Jay-Z flexing. It's kind of a mid to low shrug for me. What the fuck? What is this? My hair's not greasy, it's wet. Love the midi horns. Always a good sign. This song's kind of quiet. Oh, that's why. I agree, this beat is hard. I'm so hard. I'm so hard. Go harder, go home. Back to your residence, to the president. In the California. Tell them, give me back my swag. It's my clone. Um, I feel like hard is cheesy. I don't think that saying that you're so hard is as in fashion nowadays for multiple reasons i think the jeezy feature is not the best but also not his worst he just sort of exists in it he fills in the space of a needed rapper i think the little pre-hook or the 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 bridge is pretty cool i think this is kind of a mid to low tier t rihanna song honestly it's a shrug she is better in this era this this ain't it Say, gotta live like we're dying Live Like We're Dying by Chris Allen? Oh, God. Sometimes you fall down, can't get to hungry. I think I know what this is. See, look, it's, it's songs like these as to why mid to low tier Rihanna songs are still like relatively positive because you could be listening to this crap. You know what I'm saying? Yet another forgettable American Idol one hit wonder. <laughs> Dude, these people were all industry plants, dude. Like, this was industry plant before the word even was, like, known. I will admit that I kind of like this fast-paced, high-energy uh, moment here that's kind of like rap, but not really that sort of just feels like a fast paced way of moving the song along i think it makes this chorus actually kind of kind of kick harder when he says gotta live like we're dying i don't hate this i i just think it's very of the time aged and nondescript the song's in oh whoops hi to bussy the song's in four four at the key of c zero out of ten probably 120 bpm also you know what i'm saying no turns out it's actually a good song it's at 
92 BPM, <laughs> which is also <laughs> very uh, standard. Live Like We're Dying is really catchy and fun. I'd give it a strong shrug to a light smiley ball. I, I think it's actually pretty decent. Um, sure, you know, American Idol, Industry Plant, One Hit Wonder. I like the fact that this song isn't just like trying to flex his vocals, and he's actually trying to do something fun with it. The, the high speed feeling of the guitars and the da 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 da, it, it kind of feels like, yeah, we gotta live fast. You know what I mean? It's, it's anthemic. I actually think it's pretty decent. This song is false, cheery, really cringe, and also really white. I don't like it. Coming back to it, I just don't feel the vibe of this track anymore. It's shrunk a lot. Only girl in the world. Oh yeah, this. I got my hot dog. This song was like the biggest line of cocaine for my eight-year-old brain when this came out. Oh yeah, that's what pulled me into this shit in the first place, is this very bright pop production was like otherworldly to me at the time. I mean, nowadays it sounds like dog water, but, you know, at the time, this shit was the shit. GTA 5 2013 non-stop pop FM driving while hitting pedestrians vibe. Only girl in the world slaps. I feel like this song, sure, it has aged like a lot of electro pop of the 2010s has, but not as bad as a lot of other electro pop of the 2010s has. I feel like it still, first of all, has like a throwback quality. You know what I mean? Everybody knows this song. You put the shit on the club, people are gonna fuck with it. You know what I mean? People are gonna vibe with it. It, it kind of has that quality of a uh, of vintage. I, I feel like a song like this has aged better than a song like "I'm So Hard." I'm hard. You know what I mean? Like, bro, if I hear it in the club, "I'm hard," I'm like, uh. But if I hear, I want you to make me feel like I'm the only girl in the world. You know what I mean? That shit is a lot easier to get down with. Good song. I like it. Smiley Ball. <laughs> Taylor Swift. You were in college working part time making tables. With the fear of falling, wondering why we bother with love if it never lasts. I can see it now. Do you remember we were sitting there for, for the, the first, first time? time. Do you remember? I definitely like the Romeo and Juliet song a lot better. This one's still a little bit catchy, but also a bit messy and compressed and honestly a bit boring. Like this this just doesn't hit the same. It's not as um, instantaneous as you were but with the girlfriend he just met and I could treat you better than he can. Mine is a Taylor Swift contender in the loudness war, which I think is just sort of garbage in concept. For me, the song's a shrug. I think even though it's kind of catchy and sweet, it just fails in the mixing for me. Uh, like this just feels like a big loud mess. Hey, slow it down. What you want from me by Adam Lambert, another industry plant from American Idol. Hey, what do you want from me? My ex loved Adam Lambert. Yeah. She made me listen to this entire album. It's true. I also had a dream about her last night. Does that make me weird? Maybe, maybe a little bit. I had a dream that, uh, that that I went back to school, which is a reoccurring dream for some reason. And they just happened to be there, and I had a class with them. And then we worked things out, and she didn't hate me anymore, and, and life moved on. You know what I'm saying? And, and life moved on, goddammit! Okay! Oh, oh yeah, what, what was happening? Oh yeah, yeah. What do you want from me?
Why why is it spelled like what are you? Because honestly, it's something that makes the song distinct and Adam Lambert distinct with this song. I actually like the fact that he did do that as uh, as it stands out. So what do you want from me? How was this full album? It was just like this. Decent at best. It was fine. It, it was a fine listen. I'm, look, I'll just be honest. I was shocked that like a cover like this could pass. And even in 2010, like, sure, it could be excused as hyper pop, but this shit to me looks like something that would receive so much backlash like 13 years ago. So I'm, I'm really surprised that it wasn't like, I, I never heard anything about it. It's too gay. It's too gay. Boo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but yo, this album, it gets a lot of streams, but yeah, this, this is definitely the big hit from it. Hold on. This is one of the few albums I bought in real life when I was 11, and my dad told me not to... T not to because it looked too uh, an F slur e, and then I bought it anyways. He was <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Oh God, I should have probably read that last line. Oh God, mods. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to give some context here that a large portion of my mod base is trans, bisexual, gay, whatever the fuck. <laughs> Ali is. Ali's verdict is in. They, they say, I'll allow it. It's kind of true. All right. But the, the call has been made. All right. So this song to me is a shrug, but for reasons that I cannot specify that have to do with this album cover, I'm going to have to give it a red headphones. Now, oh, I, uh, I I refuse to explain my my reasoning why. Um, just know that it probably has to do. Oh, God damn it! The police. It's the special. It's the private. It's the Paw Patrol. It's privatized. <laughs> Constitution says you do. I'm just saying, you know, you would think that for uh, for a cover this gay, that the music would be more expressive. You know what I'm saying? All right, hey, hey, chill with the booze, okay? Chill, chill. I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, oh, God, why? Why? <laughs> <coughs> You guys remember when we used to think that this was like the worst music ever made? This shit sounds like every other garbage industry plant crap. I think the only reason we cared is because it was someone who was young. Because at the end of the day, this is just like so bad. It's terrible. It's so insufferable. It's a really bad fucking song. The shit that Justin Bieber's putting out now with like yummy. I'm just saying like. There's a ton of clips of young Justin Bieber saying the N-word after I saw that. Bro, wasn't he like 14? I, I I don't mean to defend the guy, but like, you don't know shit when you're 14. You just do everything in your power to be edgy, especially when you're in the spot. I'm sorry, but I know there's no defense for that. And and I know I'm not the one to speak up on this, but bro, at, at age 14, unless you're killing somebody, all right, I don't give a fuck what you said. Boo, bad take. Boo. Look, Lil Squeaky. Love Lil Squeaky's music, okay? He's, in, he's a goofy artist, makes hilarious shit. Except for one thing. He happens to be, or he happened to be, a Trump supporter. Boo. Now listen. He was like 16 when this happened. He wasn't even old enough to vote. If you aren't old enough to vote, or and you don't know shit about the world at age 16, you are basically still a seed of your parents. I don't give a flying fuck what your political opinion is until you're an adult. Because it doesn't mean shit. You don't know shit about the world. I'm just saying. Alright? 
I'll throw myself into the game. I'll throw some uh, some skin in the game as well. When I was 16, I was the exact same way. I was like, yeah, Trump, fuck these socially justice motherfuckers. All these people, you know, take, taking money from the middle class and crap. Like, I know talking politics is going to get a lot of people, you know, divided on this crap. Uh, but the dude's a terrorist. I mean, <clears throat> what? My point being that uh, before the age of 18, you're still developing as a person. You're learning about the world. And I believe that... Things like, you know, saying words you're not supposed to at the age of 14 should not be held over your head when you're a full-grown adult. When I was 13, I, I had, had my, my first, first love. love. There was no Starbucks. Woo! She made my heart pound. No, she got me dazing because she was so amazing. Saying... This is like kid spot, but they don't even have to inter intervene. You know what I mean? This shit is a red headphones. Dog. I find this shit to be, uh, for anyone who's listening to this shit over the age of fourteen, check yourself. Hey, hey, hey! What? What? Come on! You can't be serious. You guys are giving me L's for that. I couldn't even make it through this song to get to the ludicrous verse. The synths sound like dog shit. The ludicrous verse is so corny and stupid. This song is ass. I can't even make it all the way through. I'm sorry. I gotta write some notes. Horrible synths. Kids bop without the kids bop. Dog shit chat. Common L. They... Get no bitches. So let me get this straight. He cheated on her, right? He got caught. He then apologized and said, when I'm rich, you won't have to worry about any of this. I'm very conflicted on this song. I, I don't really know how to feel about it. So, the real question is, can I forgive Jason Derulo for what he's done? Honestly, I think he's admitting the shit he never did. That nigga came for that Carly. You say he touched those kids? Well, That's right. Jason Derulo, he had to admit to what he did when he probably didn't even do He didn't do nothing. He innocent. He innocent. I'm just saying, all right? <coughs> the song is catchy. The sample is stupid. Everything's very tug-in-cheek. It's a shrug. It's a low shrug for me. I think it sounds trashy, but I got to say the nostalgia's there. It hits the right mental buttons, though it is kind of garbage. Maybe I don't know what this is. Bulletproof. What the... My fucking ears! Been there, done that, messed around. My information's just not going in. Guys, take off the nostalgia glasses for a second. This shit? You kidding me? You hear how awful this sounds? Like, the singing's great, don't get me wrong, but holy fuck! Those electronics are so over the top. Bro, this is like IDM if people who made IDM had like an IQ of 80. This song sounds like fucking garbage. It sounds like extremely dated electro pop, and I'm sorry, any song from the 90s would sweep this crap under the rug. Corona, <laughs> Corona killed my taste. I'll be. 
can't believe I can't believe you guys are putting this crock of shit on a fucking pedestal. That alone makes me hate this song even more than I probably should. It's aged like crap. It's a low shrug to a strong red headphones. But you guys are you guys are putting this crap on a pedestal? I'm just saying, get some bitches, man. All right, hold this, please, chat. All right, common chat L. Horribly dated production with catchy chorus but dog shit elect three plus <laughs> Baby, if the sky is falling down, down, down. Baby, if the sky is falling down. Let it go, put on a show, fly as we make a great escape. So, this song, I feel like, is very comparable to a lot of the bigger hits of this era, but I think what makes this a, a better track for me personally is the faster beat, uh, as, it, as it feels like it moves very quickly, which I think works very well with this style. Um, I feel like it's extremely catchy having that one word, down, down, descending like that. I mean, this, this shit sticks. It really I respect this guy saying he can't judge this song until he's heard Lil Wayne's verse. This guy understands Lil Wayne and this era of Lil Wayne. But I, I actually genuinely really enjoy this track, though. It does sound dated like a lot of the other ones here. Hold on. This guy performed at my primary school when I was six before this song came out and sang a song called Ride It to a bunch of kids 11 and under. Excuse me? <laughs> That girl from overseas, now she's my Miss America. I cannot be her soldier fleet down like the economy. I should I should look at Lil Wayne's outfit in this video. I like the boulder hat. <laughs> <laughs> he kind of looks so stupid. Not gonna lie. <laughs> It's like he looked, it's like he, he saw that there was the British flag behind him. He was like, fuck, I gotta fit in somehow. <laughs> I like that. It's a smiley ball. Even with the shitty, crappy Lil Wayne verse, I personally love the the uh, the chorus here. Sure, everything sounds like very dated auto-tune, but I feel like it's charming in the same way that like, uh, like how I use it. You know what I mean? Where it's just sort of all over the place. But it's done well enough. I think that the beat's fine. I think everything here is very minimal, but I, I think that this is in the positive for me. Shout out to his family. Club Can't Handle Me, Flo Rida, and David Guetta. Pause, I have a funny story. So I went to a, a festival to go see 21 Pilots with Tina. And when we left the set, Flo Rida was performing live. Now, I have very sensitive hearing. So I'm always wearing um, earplugs in, right? Into my ears. So he's performing, and you just hear like a wave of bass, right? He's singing a song about shots. Just how he needs to drink, you know? So it's a song about shots, and then all of a sudden... Literally the loudest bass I have ever heard infects the entire fucking area. Like you, I feel like it was like a, a an earthquake, like a sonic boom of bass. And I thought it was the funniest thing ever. I was dying of laughter. You have this generic shitty song about drinking and just the most overbearing bass ever. <laughs> Song's boring. I'll be right back. I like how that synth sounds like a T-Mobile ad. You can exchange your phone right now at T-Mobile at your newest T-Mobile store, and we'll get you the newest model. Club can't handle me. Uh, if it wasn't obvious, is a club banger, and definitely listening to it in this environment is different than when you're drunk and high at a fucking club. All right. If this comes on, the bass is booming. I'm gonna be like, fine, whatever. But in this case, I find this to be uh, unbearable. 
Oh, sweet mother of baby Jesus. Next song is by Michael Buble. Target music? Dude, I was in a Target recently and I heard Michael Buble playing. I'd like to correct this false information. I was actually in a Walgreens. Talk myself in. Okay. How much you want to bet he didn't write this song? I, I, I feel like I, I can't say for sure, but I would bet money. I would bet a hundred dollars. Yes, a hundred dollars that he didn't have anything. And I mean like not at all. A credit on the writing here. <laughs> well, it's too bad I have no way of giving you guys $100, you know? How? It's one of the least genuine sounding vocal performances I've ever heard. Oh, I think this is terrible. I think it sounds so empty and lifeless. Everyone in chat gets $100 each. Promise you, kid, I'll give more than I get. Kid. Thank you, Hector. Genuinely one of the most lifeless and joyless songs to come out of this fucking era. His voice is insufferable. Some red headphones. Dog. Seriously, I'd compare his uh his lifelessness and his vocals to this to to the degree of Chris Brown on a lot of his hits. God damn. Michael Buble is the equivalent of a bad, cheesy Hallmark Christmas movie. Carry out. Timbaland. Oh. Okay, so, you guys ever have, like, uh, a psychic vision? This is one of the songs that was playing. I told you guys, uh... I discovered basically like modern pop music on a plane somewhere. Like I was going somewhere on a plane. This is one of those songs that, that fucking infected me and made me go, Oh, I like this. And I gotta say, instantaneously, I'm fucking feeling this. Holy shit. One part I didn't tell you about this story is my parents at one point tuned into what I was listening to and said, turn it off. Don't listen to it, right? So for the first time ever since hearing this specific song, I did a little bit of research into what it was the song was, as the only lyric that I remember is something something thinks hell is a place called home, and apparently it's a song by Ludacris called Runaway Love, or at least that's what I assume it is now looking through it, and it would make sense that that would be the song, uh, especially since it's talking about like someone living in an abusive household in very graphic detail. As a kid, I had no clue what the fuck was going on. So the only word I recognized was hell. I was like, oh my God, they said hell on the radio? But now I look and I see it's a ludicrous song. It sounded nothing like fucking ludicrous, or at least I didn't think it was when I was a kid. Um, but anyways, yeah, music like this being played, my parents are like, eh, I don't know about that. I could touch you in all the right areas. Look, after watching like an hour of To Catch a Predator today, okay, that I'm just telling you right now, that shit's not sexy. I think I'm starting to, <laughs> I think I'm starting to uns maybe see why, okay? This is back when Justin Timberlake can get away with doing so much, like, actually, I'll say super cheesy sexual bars. Um, in a way that still slaps and has character. I, I feel like Man in the Woods or whatever he did, like in uh, 2017, 2018, was like the death of that uh, of of that cute that cuteness. You know what I mean? You put it all together, it's like yeah, I get it. I get what he's going for. I know it's like ugh, ugh, disgusting. It's not fucking slaps. It's 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 a sex banger. It's cheesy. It has Timbaland's like you know characteristics in it, and eh, I, I like it a lot. Okay, so the whole idea of carry out is uh, comparing this love and this sexual attraction like getting takeout food, which is stupid, but whatever. I don't give a shit. It's okay. It's a smiley ball. Don't 
Oddly enough, a G6 is apparently a type of plane, a reference that flew over a lot of people's heads. Dynamic? Goodbye. <laughs> So I've heard this song before, I'm actually gonna give it a like. Uh, let me explain this, alright? The song is stupid as shit, right? Which to me, makes it kind of the penultimate club banger. Um, I love how spacey this song is, everything has a lot of reverb, the bass just really fucking fills the space and kicks. Uh, I feel like a drinking, a drinking song for a club should be this. Those are the two requirements. It needs to go stupid. It needs to kick. I think it does. It's a smiley ball. Yeah, the, the, these verses kind of suck, but I'm gonna be honest, I don't give a shit. How low can you go? I'm so used to the chipmunk shit that it doesn't affect me, but I could really see how people would get annoyed by this pitched up chorus, but I'm I'm just, I'm honestly used to it. It, it doesn't weird me out. It doesn't like feel weird to me or strange to me. It's just like, oh yeah, it's, it's this, it's the chorus, you know? It, to me, it works as a buildup. To, to actually to the actual chorus, it's a pre-chorus. Oh, and if you get really low, I'ma shoot a video and put it all on TV. I know it everywhere. Asian persuasion, no discrimination, I love this scene. Please. Sorry, but this is unbearable to me. This sucks, man. Uh, annoying auto-tune. This song is ludicrous. I like this song. I, it's like this song is challenging, Brad, to give it a zero. Ludicrous oozes confidence. Which, for a club banger like this, you really need if you're going to be the star of it. Claps work for this ass-clapping sound, you know what I'm saying? I think the verses go hard as shit. I think the album and the chipmunks crap is only annoying for the first like two times you hear the song and then you're like, eh, you know what I kind of see, it kind of works. And I like the chorus. Honestly, one of my favorites of the day. <laughs> Next, Just a Dream by Nelly. The fuck is this? This is a Nelly song? I had no idea this was Nelly. Brad, don't you love someone? I love someone, but not to this song. It's the red headphones. Dog. I think it's aged like dog shit. I think that Nelly is not made for this kind of song. I think it sounds like shit. I think his verses sound terrible. The chorus is kind of catchy, but that's all it's got going for it. The compression is terrible. The bass is nice, but it's completely drowned out. I think the song sucks. Just, it's like a three for me, but still, it's pretty bad. I'm solo, I'm riding solo, I'm riding solo. I'm oh my god, it's Han Solo. <laughs> I'm solo, I'm solo. I'm living life now that I'm free. Yeah. Don't make it my Come on, man. Now I made it through the weather. Yeah. I'm moving on. I'm so sorry, but it's over now. I'm solo, I'm on solo, I'm on solo. I agree with, uh, I can dance to this, it's a five, that's how I feel. It's a shrug. Age like crap, 
but also age better than what you say, what you say. What, 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 what did you say? Junior. Things slightly better. And he had the rope. What the fuck is this? If you skip, you homophobic? I'm a defender of Gaga. I'm not gonna defend this crap. She's got a passionate performance, but this is mediocre for her. Not terrible, but man, I'm not feeling this crap. I'm more than just an option. Find Your Love by Drake. Oh God. This crap. I'm more than just an option. Hey, hey, hey. So hard. I don't know what you guys are talking about, okay? There's obviously no Kanye West influence in this song. I hear none of it. 808s and Heartbreaks, never heard of her, okay? I'm just saying. I, I don't know what you guys are going on about. <laughs> this is literally written and produced by Kanye. You know, <laughs> you know, I kind of hear it. Let's be honest. If Kanye was singing this exact song word for word, you guys would say that this is incredible. This, like, like seriously, the smiley ball. You guys are, you guys are defending 808s and heartbreaks, but not this. It's literally, it's it's literally as if it's like a different dimension, but the same crap. I think it sounds fine. Say ah, feature oh, say ah. Don't move my shit, man. Ho, ho, baby, what's your name? What the fuck is this album cover, dude? Bro, are you serious? Are you promoting an OnlyFans or something? Jesus Christ, just move the camera down a little bit, heifer? What 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 are you implying there? What are you asking for? I'ma beat your body like a congo? Might as well get an Try to dance like a video vixen Settlement You start drunk texting and suddenly you miss some for your girl like what the hell you gave me She like don't blame me You better do like Jamie Put Molly all in her champagne she didn't even know it I took her home and enjoyed that she didn't even know it type beat Why would you include that in the song? What the fuck? Somebody birthday Well will you well, that took a weird turn. Low shrug. Low shrug to a red headphones. I thought that that song was honestly an extremely boring Trey Song song. It's a three plus. so funny how uh, I, I've actually listened to this entire album and I made a video on it when you're listening to this uh, dog turd of an album and you get to fireflies you're like wow this is a lot more dynamic I think this is significantly more enjoyable than whatever the crap was I just listened to but when you compare it to some of the better songs of the 2010s this sounds like actual horseshit Muted? Okay, good, because I was saying that uh, the song is uh, is a 10. Okay, I'm just kidding. Fuck that. I think that it has some good musical moments, but it's underneath this tacky persona of I'm different from other people. 
I'm not like the others while also doing synthetic shitty strings reminding me of AJR. Now, and look, I don't care if it was 20 years before AJR, okay? I know it's not, but if even if it was, it reminds me of AJR. And I hate that, okay? You know what I'm saying? That shit, ugh. You know what I'm saying? Cause I saved if you and I keep them in a jar. I love the rhyming. It's great. It's a it's a low shrug. I don't think it's the worst song on here. I appreciate that it is so different for being a massive hit. It's a bit nerdy. It's a bit charming. It's not as unlikable as AJR, mostly because, you know, he's just in his own delusional world, and he's not commenting on the world around them while also being delusional. If this song was a political track, it would be a fucking zero. I'm just saying. All right, notes. Beep boop. Why am I talking about AJR? I don't know. Anyways. The box eater. Box. I love this alarm clock synth. That's a great inclusion. Yeah, exactly. The stabs are terrible. That tonight's gonna be a good night. Turn that shit up. Let's get fucked up. So my story with this song is kind of interesting, as this was one of my least favorite songs uh, when it came out. I thought it was obnoxious, I hated the stabbing chords, but I feel like the fact that this song isn't played as much uh, makes the annoying parts of this track not as annoying. So returning to it, I came to it with a bit of rose-colored glasses. And I think this is one of the better songs of this album. For me, personally, it's a strong shrug to a light smiley ball. Which, I know, sounds surprising, but I do think that it, it captures some magic of the time. Uh, it's, it's like, again, a party drinking song about having a good time and getting kind of lost in it. Uh, I think it's honestly okay. I don't think it's that bad. Thank you for those W's. Let's get it started in here. It's my drug. Maybe I need some rehab, or maybe just need some sleep. This song is most likely what inspired a atrocity exhibition by Danny uh, Danny Brown. It's true. It's true. It is actually probably the number one influence for that album. The concept of sounds annoying in the verse so the chorus sounds better is such an annoying concept and I hate it here too. You know, I, I get what you're saying, but I just don't feel that strongly towards it. Hard to admit, but she became a crush of yours as a kid. I mean, it it's like, I don't know. Because it's funny, because like she was kind of puppeteered in a way, right? By like an industry, you know what I mean? I just think that there's a lot of interesting factors to all of it because she's she's this all like be free, do whatever sort of vibe. I, I know it's not all looks when it comes to that because I, I know that there's always like, you know, something else to it. You know what I mean? You worked at Walmart around that time and the song was played four times a day. So, what I like about this trashy crap that Kesha does, and something that I explained with her other hits that I wasn't a big fan of, um, is that in the right setting, in the right circumstance, it's fantastic. This song is great. It's a smiley ball for me. Someone said it's proto-hyperpop, and I agree. It's trashy, it's extreme, it has some moments where it's just very abrasive, but it comes together and becomes very catchy in the chorus, uh, which I completely understand. I think that out of the, you know, times like with the 303 song, that song was just way too fucking trashy. But this, it has some moments of feeling rooted. Like she talks about her mother not liking what she's doing, along with the trashiness. She talks about rehab. There's there's a level of uh, relatability to the craziness. So I personally like it. I think it's really good. Um, but I can totally understand where people are coming from. Break Even by the script. What the fuck is this? Oh. I recognize this. Even. Oh, yeah, 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 this. Guess who's back in the atmosphere? I'm still alive, but I'm barely breathing. Just I'm giving her that sweet, that sweet, sweet seat. Put 
the DVD machine, man. This part's nice. The song is inconsistent, but the good moments are really good. Change my pants like the seasons. Four times a year, bitch. I'm falling on pieces. You don't hate this as much as you feel you should? I agree. I feel the same way. Standing in the Hall of Fame. This song's okay. It's honestly, I expected to hate it because I was like, oh god, another shitty fucking band like this. But for me, it's a light smiley ball. I think that this does everything right. And sure, it's definitely dated and not my style, but it's catchy. I think that the I'm Falling to Pieces refrain is pretty solid. Um, it's it's definitely not a favorite for me, but it's actually pretty pretty well done. Pretty well executed. Like, I gotta admit, this, uh, and I also love that little, like, the quiet guitar segment. I think the production's great. It's a super solid pop song. Now, would I ever check out anything from these guys after hearing this? Fuck no. <laughs> Sexy bitch, you know what it is, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to his family. Yes, I can see us. See us, see us, see us. Oh, she's a diva. I feel the same and I want to meet her, meet her. I like the effects a lot. Like he added this effect that's a uh, tremolo or whatever. Here, I'll do it here. Yes, I can see us, see us, see us, see us, see us. You guys won't hear it live, but there's an I want to be a, be a, be a, be a. But what it does is it makes it so that as the note is finishing, it just slowly fades out into existence or it, into nothingness, right, for every note, which makes it honestly kick even harder. Uh, I think that's the, it's not delay, you idiots. I'm not talking about the fucking repeating, you idiots. God, you'll hear it when I edit it. You hear how, like, every note is, like, cut off at the end? They say she sidechain? It's not just sidechain. Sidechain doesn't do... Look, the, it's not just sidechain, you, you morons. The baddest thing around town. She's not you can hear it because it you can literally hear it getting louder in the middle of the beat. All right, that is literally it's not connected always with the kick. If you listen with your fucking ears, I'm happy to say that I've successfully recreated the effect and it was exactly what I thought it would be. Uh, I'll do it even again here. She likes to go down. The baddest thing around town. She's nothing like the girl you've ever seen before. Nothing you can compare to your neighborhood hoe. I'm trying to find the words to describe this girl without being disrespectful. You're complaining that I missed your dono. Love the stream. I really want a reaction. Okay, next. Sexy fish. What the fuck is this? Ben, what are, what are you linking me? In honor of George Floyd. And I really hope we can see more unity and more peace. When already things are so difficult. So, shout out to his family. <laughs> Fucking classic. Sexy Bitch is one of my favorite, uh, actually one of the only David Guetta songs I actually like. It's a smiley bowl. I like the effects a lot, I like the synths a lot, I feel like it's very dreamy, it's very club-like. Uh, yeah, I think it's actually extremely effective. It's a really good song. L? This fucking slaps, fuck you. I want to add that every synth in this song is fantastic. They are watery, they are otherworldly, the beat is just kick and killer. I mean, Akon does a great fucking job, it's super provocative. I think that this is honestly like, uh, it's, it's an amazing combination. It's actually shocking that this came out of this era. It's, it's honestly amazing. Shawty is like a melody in my head. is like a melody What's sick, what's sick? Wait, this is the same motherfucker who produces for Jason Derulo? Not surprised. That would be really funny. I, what if I did a torture stream of this song? That would be good. 
Anyways, this song kind of sucks dick. It has a great chorus, but the rest of the song is boring as shit, and it's age. It's a shrug. As much as I'd love to say, oh, this is great. It's, the hook's fun. Yeah. It's been a ride. Not afraid. I'm not afraid to take a shit off the balcony. Everybody, I guess I had to go to that place. <laughs> See, I liked this song a lot as a kid, but I didn't really pick up on how many shit, fart, and dick bars there were. Like, that's the thing I really don't like about this song, returning to it. He defecated off a balcony, and I saved him. I shouldn't have. You're listening to this song, the clean version, when you were six years old. Say, am I listening to clean? I shouldn't have the rhyme, these words in the rhythm for you to know it's a rap. I can't cram, you can't cap into the fans who want to back down. I liked Revival when I was a kid. I, I don't think I'd enjoy it as much returning now, but as a, as a kid, I used to, li like, I was obsessed with Eminem. I, I just, like, pretty much, he couldn't do anything wrong. Until I listened to, uh, oh, was it Encore? And I was like, uh, I don't like this album. Oh, today, I'm breaking out of this cage. Now I'm so fed up, I'm so fed up. I agree, out of all the albums he doesn't like, why has it gotta be Relapse? The one where he took risks. You know what I mean? Like, why is it gotta be the garbage that that he defends, like revival? Believe me, you I'm willing to accept that people are gonna hate me for this and call me cringe, but I still like this song. It's a smiley ball. Uh, the truth is, is like as much as I would like to mature and say this era Eminem sucked and I don't feel that way about this song. I don't feel that way about a lot of the songs where it really felt like he was conquering something. Sure, he has some cringe bars in here, but his attitude is still very strong. And I still think that his flows work pretty well. Um, I kind of, I, I like the hook. I, I honestly don't mind this. I, I, I actually like it. So, you know, I'm okay with people saying I'm cringe, you know, but I, I still have fun with it. I want to be a billionaire. So fucking billionaire. Travi McCoy. I want to be a billionaire. Gym Class Heroes, baby! This is the motherfucker from the, the incredible, critically acclaimed band, Gym Class Heroes. Are these guys still making music today? Nope. Nope. But I remember this crap. This, uh, this album cover. So fucking bad. Remember when he said frickin'? I wanna be on the cup. I'm just another dusty record on the shelf. Of Forbes magazine. Eyes. Uh, what you say, what you say, cuz? For when I'm a billionaire. Yeah, I would have a show like Oprah. I would be the host of He had this. And last but not least, Grant survived. This reggae doesn't sound as good as I thought it did back in the day, I gotta say. Kinda age bad. Yeah, shit's corny as fuck. I, I don't think it's aged all that well. Actually, it's aged horribly. I, fuck the middleman. This song is aged like crap. Bitch, I'ma have a show like Oprah. I'ma be the Oprah. No, the hook's corny too. I think everything about this is aged poorly. It's a shrug. I think another thing that's funny about this song that's aged poorly is the fact that billionaires are such terrible people now, right? Like you have to exploit the system in order to become a billionaire. And so it's no longer like this beautiful thing. Like who gives a fuck about a billion dollars nowadays? You know what I'm saying? Like I'm just trying to keep my fucking head above water. Oh, I wanna be a billionaire and exploit the middle class. Take all of the little people's cash. Yeah. Oh, that synth sounds terrible. Thank God the week is done life. Hands up. He just got his falling in love It's a movie and you just TiVo. <laughs> Mommy got me switching like a dreadlock. Mr. Worldwide as I step in the room. Mr. Worldwide. Mr. Worldwide. Yes, take over the world. I almost went to a Pitbull concert with my mom recently. Uh, the, the only thing was is I was getting a dog. Or I was picking out a dog. So I, I would have flown to Arizona and, and just to go see Pitbull with my mom. Yeah, he was playing at a casino. It's true. My mom likes Pitbull quite a bit. Yeah, I like it. It's charming. I even like the Pitbull feature. It's a shrug. Pitbull is fun. 
It, it, like, in small doses like this, where he just shows up and says stupid crap, I'm like, yeah, he gets the party more turned up. What can I say? At the end of the day, like, he's corny, but he knows what he's doing. He gets it. It's fun. All right. Strong shrug for me. Aged way better than every other Usher song on this list. One of Jay's few good songs? Is that so? Originally, he wanted Beyonce on the hook, but when he heard the piano, he picked Alicia Keys to sing it instead. I like that, because while I'm not a massive fan of Alicia Keys, I think she really kills this hook. I think she does an amazing job here. You were just in New York, and funny enough, you were thinking of this song. It's super anthemic. So then there's a bridge from Alicia Keys. I, I feel like you've kind of heard enough. Joni Abstract sends in five dollars. Says pee pee poo poo. I'll tell you right now. I'd rather read that than a song suggestion. Like, hey Bradley, you should go listen to this. All right. At least pee pee poo poo. Pee pee poo poo is more creative than that. All right. I'm just saying. All right. Anyways. Smiley Ball, one of the best off this album. Um, I love Jay-Z's lyrics here. His writing is top-notch. So many great references to New York. I feel like he helps learn people who don't know shit about New York. About New York? Uh, yeah, he does his job. Honestly, and Alicia Keys kills the hook. It's a great fucking song. Ba -ba -da -ba. I don't really mind sucking them dicks. Bitch, I got the bees in the house. Big ball of I'm taking your spouse. Not the bees. Gotta on the fucking knees. Oh, national. I'm gonna be a Rio, mate, Lehman. I'm gonna be a bank. I'll be loaning out semen. Honey's it. I'm over. Will I am? You are the father. Oh! I'll be up in the club. Do whatever I like. Holy cool shit. Well, what? I'm just gonna assume whoever penciled in these lyrics was, uh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Why? Oh, Jesus, mother of God. Probably gonna have to hide that. Uh, Y'all niggas want to talk shit, but why don't you put it on the blog, nigga? Rockin' like this in my- He's obviously saying it with the A. Why? Why scripture it like this? What the fuck? Are you kidding me? My fucking eyes burn, dude. Job, nigga. <laughs> Allie. <laughs> we can't help that we pop, you know? I'm gonna be living that good. Seven C's. Take care of our families. Rock and show. I? really enjoy this song and i agree with ali the switch up is fantastic i love the the second half of this track i like how it moves whoever translated these lyrics needs some some counseling or maybe like a, a course on racism um but besides that i like it i know a lot of people hate this song find it insufferable but i actually I, i've always loved this song and i don't think that's changed uh my full review of this album does exist if you want more uh, that's about it. But already have you up under my arm, I use the bar. Now we got Cooler Than Me, the song from Mike Posner. If I could write you a song to make you fall in love. Cooler Than Me, you got design and shade. Oh. Oh, that's good. Rose makes a good point. Says, Cooler Than Me is the prequel to I Took a Pill in Ibiza, therefore it serves as important lore. I agree because the way he matured from this song, I feel like gives it new context. Uh, I, I definitely prefer his more mature music, but it does still kind of slap. You guys remember when Mike Posner collaborated with um, your favorite Martian? And made one of the worst songs I've ever heard in my life. Who here hasn't heard that song? 
It's true. It's true. He did it. Well, allow me to find it for you. It's called She Looks Like Sex. There's another song with this exact name by Mike Posner, uh, so I'm unsure whether or not this is a sample, and I want to give that information as I might have been misinformed about this song. Featuring Mike Posner. There he is. Oh my fucking ears. She looks like sex. Maybe not yet, but don't fret. I bet if you get drunk, suddenly you'll be dead. Bruh, I have motherfuckers still telling me that I'm too harsh on your favorite Martian. As if it's not like the worst bullshit ever. I got you. We all see. I could write you a song, but oh, but you probably won't. Hey, Ben, thank you so much for being here. No problem. All right. Cool, then me, uh, he has some great moments here. I like this little solo at the end, and I, uh, I appreciate the posturing in this track. I, I think he's actually doing pretty okay here. It sounds dated for me, but I still think it's fun. It's, it's a strong shrug. I don't love it. I think his voice kind of sucks on this track, um, but it's, it's actually, it's fine. Maybe it'll grow. I don't know. Eyes, her eyes make the stars look like them. So beautiful, but every time she asks me, do I look okay? You are I'm gonna let the ch uh, the chat decide. Did I miss anything? Is it worth rewinding? What do you guys say? No. I am not at all a fan of this era of Bruno Mars. I find this shit to be intolerable and super fucking boring. I never liked it when it came out. I like it even less now. Oh, the bass. Jesus. <sighs> song is boring. Red headphones. Fuck you. I don't care that Bruno Dog. Mars sounds passionate. He has such better music now. He's evolved so much as an artist. This radio filler garbage could go suck it. So boring, dude. Oh my god. God, if I want to fucking fall asleep while I'm driving, I'll put this on. You think I'm pretty away tonight. Teenage Dream. Hey Brad, I just came out of the gate of my parents and they accepted me. Streams really helped me wind down and chill after a long ass day. Thank you for unintentionally being there for me. I got you, homie. Sit back and enjoy the show. Thanks for sharing with us, by the way. In good hands, good company. This song was so ahead of its time. I mean, that's the issue, though, with people like Dr. Luke. You know what I'm saying? I mean, look, Dr. Luke, I feel like... All right, this is going to be a bit of a controversial take. Um, but I feel like he's made enough good music to where... That nigga gave us our Carly. You say he touched those kids. I gotta agree with Kendrick here. I, I mean, he gave us Kesha. You know, he gave us Katy Perry. You know, is is it... It's impossible for him to do anything wrong. Hashtag free YSL. Hashtag free YSL. I'm just saying. That nigga gave us our right. Carly. You say he touched those kids. I'm complete. Let's go all. Like a living on teenage dream. Yeah, this motherfucker made a lot of great music, and Teenage Dream is one of them, as I feel like this song is fantastic. I think it's great, it's bright, it, it embodies the fucking album cover with this whole thing feeling like a bubblegum fucking cotton candy dream. It's honestly really fucking good. It's a smiley ball. I think it's aged very well. Hello, hello, baby, you called, I can't hear a thing. Next song, Telephone, Lady Gaga and Beyonce. Oh, that lead-in was fantastic. Oh, wow. All right. Unfortunately, for the sake of this video's copyright, I have to cut up this song as much as I really don't want to. Um, I'll just spoil it. This song has grown unbelievably. I mean, upon returning to it, the things that make this song incredible... I mean, it... Oh! Oh, my God! Okay, that's all I'm gonna say. Oh, wow, that auto-tune sounds like horse shit. She must have been dancing in the studio or something. Gaze for Gaga. 
Yo, if you sucking dick in the parking lot of Rolling Loud, put your fucking lighters in the sky, you know what I'm saying? If you sucking dick, Lady Gaga, you know what I'm saying? Wait, why am I putting my lighter up? I don't know. Anyways. The sky full of lighter. Yeah, I don't know why I put my lighter up. I, I don't know. It's just... Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> What the fuck is this beat? In terms of art pop turned actual, con like, contemporary pop, stuff that actually hits the radio, um, yeah, for a club song that has a little bit of artsy fartsiness in it, I think it's pretty good. It's a light smiley ball for me. Even with some of this crap sounding aged and shitty. The progression of the song is brilliant. It just goes by like this. The Beyonce feature is very welcomed. The beat is kind of goofy, but the entire song is kind of wacky in a way. Um, yeah, this song is brilliant. It's grown to a strong smiley ball, which I don't think I said I for any other song. had to perform an acapella of this version song in middle school. How did it go, Scriggle? Did you butcher it? Oh my god. <laughs> Mommy issues the anthem. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that means about me then, because I, I think this fucking shit slaps. <laughs> Mommy issues gang rise up. <laughs> Look, if I had to guess, this song sounds like it's about pegging. I'm not, I'm not shitting you. It's saying like. Is you big enough, right? Can you get it up? Take it. I'm going to give it to you harder. You know what I'm saying? But there was one other line here. I'm going to let you be a writer. Oh, yeah, that's the other part. I want what you want. You know what I'm saying? She wants to fuck him. Give it to me, baby, like boom. What I also love about this song is I feel like I could listen to this infinitely. I love it. I love the sound of this hook. Everything about this screams sugar perfection for me. Love the sound of this track. Easily one of my favorites of the day. Uh, fantastic. I, I like this. I think it's an aged very well banger. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, sounds absolutely incredible. In my head, I see... You are over me in my head. Everybody's looking for love. Oh, does this guy sing like this, dude? Wait, hold on. What? Yeah. Ew. Song's fucking obnoxious. Uh, I think his singing is terrible. The moaning is really awful. It's certainly iconic. And there are other songs that are very repetitive that I gave the past two. This one I just don't like it. It's the red headphones. Dog. She got that good, good. She Michael Jackson bad. I'm gonna gonna. I put her on. Make your bed, your money. Haters in the building. I, 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 I can make your bed I'm, I'm attracted to her. Well, her attractive ass. Time. I, I knock, knock her, her lights out. out. And she still shine. But I, I love, love to watch her leave. But I keep her running back, back and forth. Sock and tease. Real kind of the space. space. I'm good, good. I put her under. I, I see, see me with her. her. No Stevie Wonder grocery bag. You for me, she said, Don't you ever show this? I'm too loyal. She got a man, but she's not alone. Miss Independent, yes, she's got her own. 
Especially here, Hold Your Head, Chris. I thought it was fucking Chris Brown on the hook, but it's actually not. Even though it's an entire song based around a really terrible pun, Call Me Mr. Flintstone, I Can Make Your Bedrock, which is so stupid. It's so terrible. First time I heard it, I was in shock. I was like, is that really what the fuck this is? I've gotten used to it. And I think it's actually a fun posse cut. Uh, that, that shows off all these 2010 artists, and it's one that's actually pretty good to return to if you feel like uh, indulging in this, you know, era of young money. For me, it's a smiley ball. That rating has shrunk significantly. Returning to this song, the beat is absolutely horrible. The verses are kind of fun, but it's borderline unlistenable. It actually kind of sucks. Here you go, baby, I like it. The way you move on the floor. Next, we have I Like It, Enrique Iglesias and uh, Pitbull. Oh, God. It's really fun getting your opinion on all these old songs you otherwise wouldn't do a video on. Yep, I, I, I really enjoy this because, I, I mean, I was around during this era. I have a lot of memories with these tracks, and it's fun returning for me. Uh, and, and I like doing this all in one big video. You know, it's, it's very joyful for me. Oh. Guys, I have a confession to make. I might actually like Enrique Iglesias' music. Like, from the two songs that I can pick off the top of my head, this and tonight, I'm fucking you, which I definitely prefer the clean version, but still. These generic, shitty club bangers, they're fun. I kind of like it. Screaming like never before. <laughs> You'll love his song called El Baño. I don't even remember what that sounds like, but I put it as one of the worst songs of uh, 2017. It's indistinguishable reggaeton about inviting some girl to go to the bathroom with him. Like, dude, let's hold hands in the bathroom together. Yo, girl, what if our what if our poops touched in the toilet? Type song, you know what I'm saying? The chat didn't like that one. <laughs> there are elements of this track that I like, but I overall find it to be a, a sort of obnoxious track. I. Yeah, I kind of have issues with it. It's a shrug. Next, we have Nothing On You featuring Bruno Mars, B.O.B. I used to listen to this album quite a bit, actually. Beautiful girls all over the world. Nothing on you. Yes, B.O.B. is the flat earther, but, uh, but his music in the 2010 era slapped. I'm sorry, but like, it's corny as shit. But he had fun. Someone called him Andre 1500, which I thought was like the most accurate and hilarious thing you could possibly say about him. Oh, baby, baby. So my issues that I had with um, Girl, You're Amazing Just The Way You Are, you would think I would have the same problems with this because, oh my God, he's doing the exact same fucking thing, right? Because it's a chorus, I think it it's more balanced. Like, I can't fucking sit there and listen to an entire Bruno Mars song where he's acting like this. Um, but as you hear, when the drop comes in, the the... The energy changes. Oh yeah, I really enjoyed So Good. That also was a good song. People gotta put respect on this man. You wow when you ain't got nothing on. Baby, you the whole package. Let you pay your taxes. Stop. Now think about it. Song's dorky. But I like it. It's a smiley ball. One of my actual favorites of this list. Uh, I, I don't think it has fully to do with nostalgia. I definitely think that like his corniness is part of his style. And sure, this was before he started being really serious in his music because he eventually started making music that I found to be just extremely unlikable. I'd like to give you an example of this to hopefully defend my case on why I enjoy this a little bit more. One rolled up in my left hand. My left hand. See you on my mind, tighter than the headband. Then the handstand. Shine bright eye, give your girl a slight tan. Like a corner bag, that's an interception. Interception. Think uh, yeah, anyways. Um, he just starts moving in this direction. I, I don't know anything about football. Did he mean to say cornerback? Does 
This is boring shit. It doesn't have that same... Uh, I don't know. It's, it's just, it just sounds worse than, like, other club bangers on this list. I don't think that this the popularity of this song justifies its placement. This motherfucker still has 10 million monthly listeners. Holy shit. The Rockstar Collection? It's the same fucking album cover. This dude really only... Re so he released an album in 2008. He's released one album and two variations of that album. If you fall I don't know. I mean, don't you have to make music to fall off? You know what I mean? Like, if you never make music again and there's no comparison point as to your previous stuff, can you really say that they've fallen off if they just dip? He didn't fall off, he just jumped out the plane. Lauren Hel Hill never fell off either. Yeah, but she released MTV the MTV live session. So, yeah, Lauren Hill did fall off. Dude, Ludacris was huge. He was like the da baby of the time. He was just on every single song, just like giving his fucking his input. He was holy shit. He was huge here. I, I find this song to be really boring. It's a low shrug for me. It's tolerable if it's on in the background, but wow, like it, it just doesn't sound like it's aged all that well. Next song, Dynamite. I have not heard this in forever. Yeah, I've always hated this song. I don't hate it as much as the last one. It's a low shrug. Um, it's an annoying club banger. The repetition is ear grating. The production sucks ass. It's aged horribly. I, I hated this when it came out, though. Might even hate this more than the last one, and I expected this to be better. Gaga sweet. I don't want to sit here for another two minutes. I'll just say uh, this song is spectacular. I do want to move on. I have heard this song a million times. Um, yeah, this is this is up there as uh, along with paparazzi as being some of the best of this era. A really creative pop song that I feel like is engaging and still a spectacle even this many years afterwards, especially sandwiched in between the last two garbage songs we heard. Just gonna stand there and watch me burn. Can't tell you what it really is. I can't tell you what it really is. I can only tell you what it feels like. I suffocate right before I'm about to drown. She resuscitates me. Come back. We're running right back. Whoops. How the fuck does this have 720 million streams, by the way? Holy shit, so bad. I was going to say that, look, you might think this song sucks, uh, but this is the kind of shit that he tried to replicate on his, um, on his, like, later projects, and especially on Revival. I want to show you guys the song River, which is trying to do what this does, but like a thousand times worse. So bad. Listen. I've been a liar, been a thief of me. Well, <sighs> I don't want to admit to something. He's coming home with his neck scratch to catch black. Sweat jackets and dress slacks. It's a chess match. She's on his back like a... The song sounds terrible. It sounds... Terrible. Jetpack, she's kept track of all this internet chats. It's actually just shit on my last chick, and she has what my ex lacks. Bro, you thought window pane was bad? Literally, I just shit on my last chick, and she has what my ex lacks. All right, now with that in mind. You'd rather listen to me listening to this? That's the point I'm trying to say. I don't give a fuck if you think this is bad. I'm just trying to show you that this is better. I love the way you lie. Somebody so much you can 
think Love the Way You Lie is really well written. It's disturbing, but in a way it makes you think about how abuse works and criticizes it in a way that describes it. It's an 8 out of 10 for you. Good re good review. I agree. I, I like the fact that it is so straightforward, but it's e also easy to understand, and I feel like the shitty puns make it memorable. Um, I think he does pretty much like everything that he planned on doing with this song successfully enough to where it is such a big trick. Yeah, but he also has Stan, which is about abuse. That's completely different. My favorite moment was uh, the the YouTube poop that has um, a leave, like the. Um... Now you get to watch a leave out the window. Guess that's why they call it a leave. <laughs> <laughs> I think this song's fine. I like it. It's a light smiley ball for me. Again, I know I'm supposed to hate this era. I know I'm supposed to hate Eminem from this crap, but I grew up on this shit, man. It's so familiar to me. I feel comfortable with this crap. Like, I felt like he had a solid flow here. I do like the lyrics and the way they come across. Sure, it's got some corny ones in here, but I think it's fine. He, he comes through very passionately. Airplanes featuring Haley Williams. All these sad piano bangers, dude. Sky, like shooting stars. I could really use a wish right now, now. Yeah, I could use a dream or a genie or a wish for letting this. Yo, Dynamic, where are you at? Fix this shitty mix. Holy fuck. After all the party and it's smashing and crashing. That phone in your lap and you hoping but them people. When you were a kid, for the longest time you thought the verse started with, I could really use a genie or a weenie or a wish. I remember learning the lyrics to Love the Way You Lie in fourth grade because uh, I, because a girl I had a crush on liked the song. Oh my god. You get another hand soon after you fold. That's genius. So if I jump off this building, I'll get another hand after you fold. Oh, but that's right. If I try to jump off the building, I'm just going to end up on the other side of it because the building is actually flat. Yeah, plain, sorry I'm late. I'm on my way, so don't close that gate. I like shooting Guess that's why they call it a leaf. So the conscious side of this crap could be very cringe. I actually think he executes it decently well. I like the hook a lot. I think Haley Williams really is, kills it with this shit. I mean, I really like her voice on this song. Sure, it sounds like boring, cliche, generic ass piano banger from the fucking times. And I do think the compression sucks ass. Uh, for, what the fuck is this spam? Uh, for me, it's a strong shock to a light smiley ball. Baby, let me. I did it again. Oh my god. Oh gosh. Is this the clean version? Oh my. Let me love you down. What the fuck? That clap. Oh my god. Gosh, chili wee. My fucking ears. What the fuck is this beat? Special. This was just like dynamite. How pow. Honey got some boobies like wow. Oh, wow. oh my god. Gosh. Gosh. Wow. That song really sucks. That song's really bad. <laughs> oh my god, that's bad. Even though this song does everything wrong under the sun, it grew a little bit because I feel like it is so different of the era, which is definitely why it rose to where it was, because it's like, oh my god, so futuristic. It's it's like garbage. I just kind of like the crowd cheers. Oh my god. So it's like a low shrug. <laughs> Ugh, California Girls, Katy Perry, and Snoop Dogg. Hi. No place. What's up, Dr. Cleo? It's getting heavy. Wild, wild, West Coast. These are the girls I love the most. Do the dance, but what dance? Even though I don't know the dance, the video is also burned into my head with this soft, sugary, sweet vibe. It sounds like uh, every male's, uh, ster every stereotypical man's fantasy. You know what I mean? Oh my God, all the girls, topless, we're here. He 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 Ah! Come squeeze our butt. It's like, it's selling this bullshit. And I gotta say, 
I'm getting a one-way trip to California. You know what I'm saying? So smile the ball. Hey, nobody's perfect. You know what I'm saying? Hey. Oh, sweet mother of Jesus. Stick stays on the front and let you, you blow my cock. This song sucks. Yo, let me play the uh, YouTube version. It's a lot better, okay? So gay, so gay. <laughs> Anyways, this is a better version, all right? Now let's go back to the version that kind of sucks ass. Every single dream I dream <laughs> I, 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 I am on trim chest Virgin, your Madonna And I'm always with your mind I'm gonna meet some gangsta I'm so thug You're the only one I'm dreaming of That's my favorite line of this whole thing. I'm so gangsta, I'm so thug, you're the only one I'm dreaming of. That, that personally, to me, is like the funniest shit. I said this song was kind of a guilty pleasure and not the worst thing in the world. Upon revisiting, I'd like to retract that statement as this song is the worst thing in the world and my guilty pleasure definitely comes from the parody versions, which I would like to place in their own category as I would only ever listen to those and not the original. Kane is in the building. This song has not stood the test of time. I'm just saying, like, you got motherfucking songs with, like, you know what I'm saying, like a billion streams from this era, and then this one at number two with less than 200 million. Reaching for the phone because I can't fight it anymore. Another shot of whiskey. I can't stop looking at the door. Wishing you could come sweep it away did before. Cause the day bleeds in the nightfall. You come sweeping in the way you did. My mind. For me An interesting point is that this surely, is a uh, surely this list will be based off CD sales uh, more than the charts now. So the number of streams might seem a bit odd at times. Yeah, like, for example, the Limp Bizkit Chocolate Starfish album was, like, it, it sold a million copies in the first week. It's, like, one of the only albums to ever do that. So, the fact that it only had, like, you know, like, say, like, 200 million streams on the most popular song, I feel like, is, is a good example of that. Lewis Graham! Need You Now is surprisingly decent. It's a light smiley ball for me. I uh, think that the way that the song moves along is really nice. Like, it feels very cohesive. It's a song that I feel like is, um, like, like, how do I say this? Like, the production's great. I feel like out of all the country songs that have come throughout, like, the, the second half of this list, this I can understand why this is as high up as it is. The chorus is really catchy. Uh, the story and the verses actually work and matter. Um, overall, I think it's pretty good. Morning, feeling like P. Diddy. Hey, what up, girl? Grab my glasses, I'm out the Kim Pedicure on our toes, toes. Trying on all our clothes, clothes. Don't stop, make it pop. DJ, blow my speakers up tonight. I'm a fight. Ain't got a care in the world. I agree. As a kid, I hated this song, but as, a, as an adult who's been out partying, who's... I'm sorry, who's had, had drinks before. I've had drinks before. Um... Yeah, this is the kind of shit I want to listen to. Sounds like someone who's fucked up. I can see why this is number one. This is exactly what I was talking about when I said Kesha has got the fucking sauce. That's right. I, I've had alcohol before. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, fuck. I shouldn't have been behind this camera. Oh, god damn it. Oh, shit. Why am I... Look, I just got a... Guys, is 0.5 a bad alcohol blood level? Can someone tell me quick before uh, before they test me again? Rad Taste of Music presents his new 170 proof whiskey for your viewing experience. Like Mick Jagger, I'm talking about. I love my blood alcohol, like I like my milk, 2%. Don't stop, make it pop, DJ, so, this is definitely uh, like, I, look, I was around this era. I 
kind of got so fucking annoyed of this song, but eh, I gotta say, return to it. How many? Is, yeah, it's got 800 million streams. God damn. Um, yeah, this this is kind of proving my point. At least what I'm trying to say with songs of this era that were trashy that Kesha kind of started, you know, popularizing that uh that that still work today and seem ahead of their time. For me, this song is a smiley ball. I think it's an incredible chorus. And nowadays, now that I've kind of calmed down a bit from this, uh, you know, overexposure to the song, I could say, yeah, this, this shit catchy as a motherfucker. But I'm not going to save it. Why? It's still kind of cringe. Ladies and gentlemen. I waited till now to tell you, but I feel sick as shit, and I want to go lay down. So I'm going to go do that before I have to stream again. I streamed 10 hours that day. I've decided to change this format to now make the ranking its own separate video as I want to give extra time to listening to each of these songs and I actually want to give you a well thought out list. The reason being is I'm actually having a shitload of fun doing this and I'm okay with extending it out another video. Um, this video is a ton of work so if you actually did make it to the end please hit like because it must mean you liked the fucking video if you made it an hour and 30 minutes. Alright, uh, you know, send money to the babies out in Haiti. And uh, gang gang.